In this example, we're going to create all the toolpaths to cut this five-star coffee sign. We're going to heavily focus on v-carving in this session, where we'll discuss all the points to consider to get the best results. We'll walk through start to finish, utilising the toolpath preview to give us the best indication of how our part is going to turn out. So let's take a moment to discuss a few points that will enable us to achieve great results every time we come to v-carve as there are a number of factors to think about to get it right. Firstly, v-carving is the easiest way to create really attractive, decorative elements with a CNC machine. Whether you are using it for text or a graphic, it's really fast to both calculate it in the software and pretty quick to run on the machine to ultimately give you what is a 3D look. It's important to try and understand how v-carving works and that the depth of the cut is determined by the tool angle and the width of the vectors. V-carving can only be done with closed vectors as it will run the tool directly in the centre of the opposing vectors to the depth that the tool can essentially fit in between them and up to the maximum pass depth specified. Understanding this is essential when considering the perfect tool for the look that you want to achieve. Some points that we need to think about that can affect the outcome of our v-carving is to ensure that we have flat material and adding to this point we also need to make sure that our machine is level as we want the tool to go into the material at an equal depth per vector width on all places we are cutting so that we're not left with a piece that is unevenly cut. Another thing that we need to make sure of, and that's that the tool's Z0 is set accurately to the top of the block. Now setting it to the top of the block eradicates the necessity of accurately measuring the thickness of the material and ensures that the tool enters and leaves the material where it should to create sharp points that it requires. We also need to have accurately sized tools. Even if our tool states that it's a 90 degree tool, it's best that we measure that, as even one degree out will alter the look of the part when we come to preview it, or even when we run it on the machine. Another aspect to tooling is to ensure that our tools have a sharp point and not a small flat, as this will also take away from the overall effect and we also want to make sure that the tool has no dents in it. Lastly, we need to make sure that we are using clean, closed vectors to v-carve, as this will ensure that we will have nice, smooth v-carving. We also need to ensure that these vectors are not overlapping, as it will make it unclear to the software which areas we want to v-carve. If you do have a design that requires overlapping, you can create separate v-carving toolpaths which are ran in the order that you require them to achieve the effect that you are after. So let's go into the software and we're going to open up an existing file. So from the 5 star coffee sign project folder, we're going to open up the 5 star coffee vector drawing.crv file. So this is the file that we created in the drawing session for the 5 star coffee example. And now as we're just focusing on toolpaths in this session, we can switch over to the toolpaths tab. So to do that, we're just going to use this icon here just to temporarily close the drawing tab and open up the toolpaths tab on the right hand side. Now, before we create any toolpaths, it's important that we check our material setup. So let's use the set option here. So here we can see that we're working with a material thickness three quarters of an inch. Okay, I'm going to keep it as that, that's the material that I'm using. XY date and position is currently in the centre of our job, which is handy when you are designing uh, the vectors that we've got here. In this case, now that we're on to toolpaths, I'm going to move that over to the lower left hand corner, so you can see that represented by this red square here. My Z0, we're going to do that off the material surface, okay? So my flat piece of three quarter inch block, we're going to set that Z0 off the top of the block there. 
Okay, and then check over the rapid C gaps, home start position, and then we could go ahead and press OK. Okay, so we're pretty much going to VCOV everything that we've got here. Apart from the outer vector, where we're just going to look at running a profile pass to cut that out of the material. So let's just draw a box to select all the vectors, and then we're going to hold down Shift just to deselect that outer vector. So all these vectors you can see highlighted here, we're going to look at V-carving them. So if those selected, let's go into the V-carve toolpath. So we're going to show you a couple of different examples with different V-bit tools, just to show you the different depths that they can cut, and use the preview to actually preview those toolpaths with the different tools. So if these vectors that we've got selected here, we can go into the form and start to enter some details here. So start depth is going to be at zero on top of our flat material that we've got. Next thing we need to do is choose a tool from the tool database. So if we use the select option here, you can see in our tool list we have a V-bit section. Okay, so currently we've got three different V-bits in there. Now I actually would like to use a 120 degree 1.25 inch V-bit. Okay, now I can see I actually don't have that in my list, so I need to look at creating a new one. Now I can see I've got a 90 degree 1 quarter inch tool here, so I'm just going to look at copying that one. So with that selected, let's use the copy option here. You'll see it's now highlighted here and we still have the original one here. So if that highlighted, we just need to make a few edits here in the form. Okay, so here we just want to change the name, make that 120 degree, one quarter inch tool. Okay, then we need to change the angle here again, so 120 in there. And then we could simply press apply, and you'll see that we've got a message come up here. Pass depth, half an inch is greater than the tool maximum cutting depth maximum pass step for this tool is 0.361 inches. Okay, so what it's done, it's worked out by the angle of the tool and how wide the actual tool is. And so the maximum pass step is 0.361. So we can just OK that and we're just going to change the pass step in here. I'm going to change that to 0.35. Now, if you are going to run this, you need to ensure that all these settings are safe and appropriate for your machine tooling um, and the material. So then we could just go ahead and press apply there, and then we could just OK that. So let's give this a name. So we're just going to call this one VCOV Design, and then we could go ahead and press calculate. Okay, so that will open up the preview toolpaths. You can see that toolpath there. And then what we could do is actually run that. So let's put that in the ISO view and we'll just reduce the speed down a little and we'll just preview that cutout. Okay, so you can see it being simulated there in the 3D view. Now if we just zoom in into the design, you can see the actual result of the VCOV that we've got here. Now with 120 V bit, uh, you can see that we have quite a shallow cut. And this is good if you're going to be gilding the design, as the shallower the angle is, the more likely that it's going to collect within the gaps. And it will add to the shiny reflection that you do get from the gold leaf. So let's just put that in the ISO view. And so now we'll look at the results that we can get from different V-bit tools. Um, we're going to look at a much steeper angle this time, where we're going to look at using the 60 degree V-bit tool, just to show you the difference there. So let's just close that preview, double click on our toolpath here. We're going to go into the uh, tool database by pressing select here. And then this time we're going to look at using the 60 degree quarter inch V-bit here. Okay, so if we just go ahead, check over the settings, we could go ahead and press OK there. And then we could go ahead and press Calculate. Okay, so the 60 degree will mean that we can now cut a lot deeper than the 120. So we don't really need to reset this preview, so we could just go ahead and preview this toolpath right now. Okay, so you can see straight away that we're going in a lot deeper and the text and the logo look a lot more sharper. 
and this is all governed by how far away the vectors are apart. So if we just zoom in and take a look at the S for example. So the S itself at the top here where these tails are at the top and the bottom, the vectors are actually a lot closer together, hence why we don't have a lot of depth at the tips of the tails. But as the tool comes around the S where the vectors are actually getting wider apart, we're able to get that tool down in there to create a much deeper cut and so you can see the effect of the widths of the vectors and the actual depth of cut that we get using these v-bits. So let's have a look at another example. So we'll just put that in the ISO view and we're just going to look at another tool that's somewhere in between the um, 60 degree and the 120 degree v-bit. So we're going to look at the 90 degree v-bit this time. So let's just close that preview down with that toolpath highlighted. Let's use the edit option here. We're going to change the tool, so go into the select option, open up the tool database, and we're going to look at the 90 degree 1 quarter inch V bit. Check over the settings, then go ahead and press OK, and then we could go and calculate that. Okay, so now we've opened up the preview toolpath form. What we need to do is actually reset this preview, as the last toolpath we looked at was using the 60 degree V bit, and that will always go deeper than the 90 degree would ever be able to. So we need to reset this preview and then we could just go ahead and preview this toolpath using the 90 degree V bit this time. Okay, so you can see how it simulated that. I can take a look at that, look at it down the Z if I wanted to. And just from a personal point of view, I prefer the look of the sign using this tool. The really nice thing with this software is that I can check to see what the effects are from various tools before I go and run that toolpath on my machine. So I'm going to stick with this tool. So we'll just put that in the ISO view and then we could just simply close that down. We're going to go into the 2D view and then we're going to look at running our last toolpath which is a profile toolpath to actually cut our sign out of our material block. So if that vector is selected, let's go into the profile toolpath. So our start depth is going to be at zero. Our cut depth is going to be three quarters of an inch. So we're going to cut all the way through that material. I'm just going to use this option here to show advanced toolpath options. And then we're going to look at choosing a tool. Okay, so the eighth inch end mill is a little bit too small for what I want to use. So we're going to use the select option here. I'd like to use the quarter inch end mill here, press OK. Ok, so we can currently see that's going to cut that in six passes. Now I am cutting fairly soft material so I could safely up the pass depth for this tool path. So let's go to the edit option. Ok, so edit allows us to just change settings for the tool for this particular tool path that we're working on, in which case I can safely up the pass depth to a quarter of an inch in there, press OK and I can see now that that's going to cut that in three passes. I'm going to machine outside and we're just going to give that a name. We're going to call this one profile cutout and then simply press calculate. Okay, so you can see that toolpath there and then we could just go ahead and preview that cutout. So you can see that's the second pass, last pass now and we can see that that has cut that out for us. Okay, so what I could do is I could just delete this excess waste material to get a better visualisation for the actual sign that we're cutting. To do that I could simply double click on that material and you'll see it's deleted that for me. And so now that we do have our finished sign what we could do is take advantage of the toolpath preview to create a virtual prototype of what the actual cutout and finish will look like for this sign. For example, I could go and change various aspects of this. For example, we could just look at the actual material we're using. Okay? Not only can we choose from woods or metals, stones, we could also look at just using a solid colour. For example, we could go with, let's say, a grey background that would paint up. And then if we go to our VCARV design toolpath here, we could use the toolpath colour, whereby we could just fill that with 
various different colours. So we'll go with that gold. I like the way that that looked. You could put it in an ISO view. And then what we could do here is we could actually save this preview image where we could just go ahead and send that over to our customer for approval. So I'd simply press save preview image and we could just put preview sign one and then save that and then we could email that over to our customer. In this case I'd like to actually go with a Canadian maple uh, colour there. So we've got the Canadian maple and then for the actual toolpath colour for the v-carve I'm going to go something like a grey and then again I could go ahead and simply save that preview out. So I'll just call this one preview sign to press save and again send them over to my client and then we could just wait till we get the go ahead from our customer and we can then go ahead and cut the actual part. So let's just put that in the Z view and we're just going to close this down. One final thing that we're going to look at and that's the ability to create a job setup sheet that I can print off and take to the machine with me detailing all of the key setup information to cut this sign out. So to access the job setup sheet simply come to this icon here to create a job sheet. When I click on that, that will just give it a name. We can change that name if we wanted to and that's going to save that as a HTML file which I can then open from this folder that we're saving it to here. Alternatively what I could do is I could hold down control and then press on the create job sheet here and then I'll save that into my file, press save and because I held down control it's actually going to open that job setup sheet for me so I can see the actual vectors here in our job layout we can see our material setup so we can see the height of that, the width, the depth where we put our home start position we can see our Z0, our XY position and our clearance settings here and then we've got our toolpath summary. So you can see we're using two different tools. We're doing a V-carve pass. And then we're going to finish that off with a profile cutout pass. And it will give us uh, spindle speed information and time estimates, which can be really handy if I've left this job, say, for a few days. And then I could just simply print this sheet off, save out the toolpath, go to machine with all of this information to hand. Okay, so let's just exit that and then we're actually going to look at saving out those toolpaths. So to save the toolpaths we use the save toolpath option. Okay, so we're just going to make that VCOV visible. We can see that's listed here. Choose the appropriate post processor for your machine and then use the save toolpath option. So you could just call that VCOV design. Enter the name of the tool if you felt that that helped. And you could just simply press save. And then we could just simply select the next tool, make that visible. We can see that that end mill is in there. And again, choose the post processor followed by save toolpath to actually save those toolpaths out and take them over to your machine to actually cut this sign out. So that completes that file. So what we could do is we could go ahead and actually save the file. So we could come back to that and make edits if we needed to. Let's go to file, save as, and then in the project folder, I'm going to call this one 5 Star Coffee 2.5D Toolpaths. Press save. You can access that from the project folder. And that completes this tutorial.